all her splendor.
Father God, our own people here from the house of the Lord at Livingstone Family Church. Some, Father, our extended friends and extended family, Lord, co-workers. Lord, we lift them up, Father. Yes. Lord, you can do what man can't. And tonight we declare, as we have just worshipped, that you can break every chain, every chain that the enemy of sickness that has tried to put upon your people, every chain of depression, every chain of oppression. Lord, you are able, Father. You are willing and able, is what your word says. And we just stand tonight in faith for them. We stand tonight for our brothers, our sisters in Christ. Lord, we thank you, Lord, and we declare them healed and touched by your mighty hand tonight, Father God. We declare that, Lord, wherever they're sitting, wherever they're laying down, wherever they're at, Father, at the sound of our voices, Lord, right now we declare supernatural strength, supernatural peace, and supernatural healing in the name of our every name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen, church. Do you agree with me tonight? Hallelujah. Amen, amen. You may take your seats this evening, amen. If you need a tithing and offering envelope, amen, we're going to get ready to um, receive this evening's tithe and offering, amen, and we're going to just dedicate that to the Lord tonight. Um, and as you prepare that, amen, as you prepare your seed, we just want to, of course, always just um, give you our hearts of gratitude and say thank you, amen, for your giving and your hearts of generosity. Um, above all, we know that you are honoring the Lord and you are hearing and abiding by the voice of his word, amen, to give and sow on good ground. And tonight, amen, a few announcements before we do that and before we pray over your giving this evening. Um, we want to remind everyone, amen, uh, that we will be having our conference, amen, our 2021 conference coming up at the end of the month. It's going to be Sunday morning and Sunday night on the 31st, amen. So January 31st, put it on your calendar, amen, we're going to be having Sunday morning is going to be the kickoff, and then Sunday night, amen, we're going to have um, two guests, one is going to be a guest group, amen, unbroken, they are going to be here ministering, amen, um, we've had them here before, they were such a blessing, amen, they're excited and they're ready, amen, they've confirmed that they can be here on that Sunday evening on the 31st. And then we are also going to be having a guest speaker, amen, who is Pastor Rene Lopez. And he is a pastor from the King's Fellowship Worship Center, amen, over on the south side, amen. So we just want to pray, continue to pray and fast, amen, for this upcoming conference event. Um, we know that we are going to be blessed, amen. You know, when, when others, when we get together as a body of Christ, amen, there is, there is nothing that God cannot do. Amen. We come in unity and when we come to lift up his name and his name alone and glorify him. And we know it's going to be a special time, a special moment for all of us. Amen. I believe we're all going to be fed the word. We're all going to grow in the Lord and we're all going to be encouraged and sharpened by the word of God. And so keep that in prayer. Amen. Put it on your calendars to be here that Sunday morning, that Sunday night. Amen. And uh, we'll be here to welcome our guests in. Amen. On that evening. Uh, we do want to announce, amen, which um, we're not going to be having any children's classes tonight, amen. We're going to be all in the, in the sanctuary to hear the word of the Lord, amen. And we want to also just remind everybody, amen, that we are continuing. We started this past Sunday, amen, uh, continuing our 21-day fast, and uh, that's going to be going through the end of the month as well, amen. And so, you know, anytime you start to pray and fast, amen, and you start to do things that, you know, the enemy doesn't want you to let go of, amen. You start letting go of some things that the devil has, you know, may not have been some bad things, right? It may not have been things that necessarily were, you know, setting us to hell or anything, but it's that, it's that sacrificial worship, amen, to the Lord. It's a sacrifice, amen, and as pastor says, amen, if it means enough to you, it means enough to God, amen, and so, um, you know, don't be like some, you know, well, I'll give this up, I don't really, I don't really eat it anyway, or drink it anyway, well, you know, you might want to rethink that then, <laughs> and then and kind of ask the Holy Spirit again, amen, what it is that maybe the Lord might want to nudge you on as far as um, abstaining and just discipline, that's, that's really what it is, is discipline are disciplining ourselves so that we can deny our flesh and get closer to the Holy Spirit and to the Lord. Amen. So tonight, we're going to learn more about that as Pastor brings a word. Amen. And with no further ado, Pastor Mark Mata. Amen. God bless you tonight, church. Oh, yes, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Pastor's looking at me like, okay. 
Let's pray, amen, for your seat tonight. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We honor you, Lord. And even in this time of our giving, we just say thank you, Father. Let us never be, Father God, ungrateful people. Lord, let us always, always have a heart of gratitude, Lord. Not just for the big moments in life, but even for the little things. Even being able to get out of bed, being able to walk, being able to have our hands and our feet, being able to breathe, Father God. The breath that you've given to us, Lord. That we would never be ungrateful for the small things, and yes, even for the great things. And Lord, we thank you tonight for allowing us to have seed to sow. For allowing us to be able to rise up and go to our places of employment. Go to um, do things that we need to do to provide for our families. Lord, we thank you for that. Yes. And as we give tonight, as we walk up here and we give into these canisters tonight, we walk up here saying thank you because it is you that has given us the abilities that we have to be able to put food and clothing on our children, Father, and on the table tonight, Lord. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, bless those that are obedient to you tonight. Amen and amen. God bless you, church. Okay, just before you come up, I forgot to say one more thing. Sunday, we, uh, we're missing a few families, but... Uh, we wanted to announce that we uh, are starting to raise a collection and offering for a new sign that we're going to put on the outdoor. It's going to be lit up. I'm telling you what, you come to night service, you're going to see that thing all the way from, from uh, Highway 90. And it's going to be good. So we already collected. We started Sunday and we've already had. We have already collected. Uh, $120 so far. All right, so that leaves us with the balance because it's about $3,000. We All we need to get started on it is $1,000. All right, so we just want to encourage you tonight to help us with that. Those of you watching by Facebook as well, we want to encourage you because I know we got givers that, that watch us and I just don't want that to go by. We're going to start announcing that practically every service until we just collect the money, amen? So if you want to do that and join us, link hands together. I tell you what, this is the day and this is the hour that we need the light of Jesus to shine. So uh, we encourage you as you give tonight. If you can't do it tonight, maybe think about on Sunday or maybe the end of the month, maybe the first of the month when you get paid or whenever uh, the Lord blesses you. Uh, get your income tax in. I don't know. But uh, praise God. You can help us with that. God bless you. And uh, turn it over. We'll do one more song. You can come up and stand to our feet. All right. And let's sing this song to the Lord as you give your offerings to the Lord. I speak the honey for blessing over you, the King of Glory. Come on.
shout Jesus to them. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's pray tonight, and then we're going to get started. Father, we thank you so much tonight. Father, we thank you that you are the Lord of lords and the King of kings, and you are that King of glory. We worship you tonight, Lord. Have it your way. Lord, touch our hearts, touch our lives as only you can by the power and by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you that you are breaking every chain of darkness. You are removing heavy burdens. You are tearing down the walls of the enemy and setting your people free. Father, just anoint me afresh and anoint your people to receive this word tonight. That it will be your word, God, that we can learn and grow and mature and be more like Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this time of fellowship. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. 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 You can be seated tonight in the presence of the Lord. Well, it's good to be in church tonight. Amen. 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 Good to be in the house of the Lord. I'll tell you what, I'd rather be in the house of God than my house. Yes. Because it's something about being in the presence of the Lord that brings fullness of joy. Yes. Amen. Amen. So tonight, I know is going to bless you. If I just want to challenge you tonight to maybe get out your tablet, your uh, notes because I remember years ago when I was uh, just learning a, a, a young minister of the gospel, I was learning how to grow in the Lord. I just had a hunger for God. I don't know if anybody has a hunger for Jesus tonight, but I had a hunger for the Lord and I wanted to grow in the Lord. And I started writing down notes and you know started asking the Lord to just teach me because I really wanted to grow in the Lord Jesus Christ and I wanted to be an effective minister for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so. Um, this area that I want to talk about tonight, I want to begin a brand new teaching series that I believe is going to bless your life. And I'm calling it simply 21 and 21. Amen. All right. You say, what are you talking about, Pastor? Well, as you know, we have entered already. I think for January the 13th. Is that where we're at right now? Yes. January 13th. We are in a new year. We are not only in a new year, but we are in a new uh, era. We are in a new time. I believe that God, by his Holy Spirit, is uh, orchestrating things and doing things, incredible things. And, uh, and I want to be a part of that. I don't know about Amen. you, but I want to be a part of what God is doing in these last days. Amen. And uh, so in this year, 2021, I speak it over your life that it is going to be a year of the supernatural favor and blessing Amen. and increase Amen. and increase of God over your very life. Amen. All right. I still remember that day. I heard that in my spirit, that this is going to be a year of supernatural increase. Amen. And it began for me and my family, and I believe it began for this church, everyone that is connected to the vision of this house. I believe that year of increase began last year, mm -hmm. even in a time of coronavirus, even in a time of pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible tells us that Isaac sowed in a time of famine. Right. He sowed at a time where in the natural, it didn't make sense to sow seed. Mm -hmm. In the natural, it didn't make sense to go to, church, go to church in a coronavirus era. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. Right. Give to the Lord. Be a tither. Mm -hmm. when, I, when we don't know if we're going to make it through the next week's check. Right. We don't know if we're going to pay our bills. What do you mean? Give to the church. Give to the work of God. You're crazy, pastor. Mm -hmm. No, I know. See, the Bible tells us that Isaac sowed in a time of famine. Yes. But in that same year, yes. before it was over, he reaped a hundredfold yes. return. Yes. Praise God. So, God knows how to take care of his people. Yes. God always shelters and protects his holy remnant. Yes. Amen. So, you don't have to be afraid. Don't look at the economy. Don't look at, you know, your bank account. Don't look at your job status. Don't look at what's going on in the natural. We are the people of God. Right. We walk right. by faith and not by sight. Right. Amen. Yes. Can y'all hear me all right? Yes. Everybody doing okay? Amen. Just turn me up a little bit because I want to hear myself. It's better to be loud than, than low. Praise Amen. God. Amen. So I call this 21 and 21 because if we start out this year as a church corporately, in a 21 day Daniel partial fast I believe the Lord will not only honor us but he'll keep that mantle of favor and blessing over our lives Amen. now I can tell you incredible things and testimonies of what God has done in my life personally uh, because of fasting the power of fasting 
And I've seen God work in my life. I've seen that, as my wife said a little bit, that sacrifice that we make in our bodies. I've seen what God can do. And always remember this. If you don't remember anything, we like to repeat this all the time, is that in regards to fasting, if it means something to you, it means something to God. Amen. But if it doesn't mean anything to you, it won't mean anything to God. Right. And it's not going to move the heavens. It's not going to change lives. And really the benefit of fasting is not to, for God to move. It's so we can be in tune with God. Yes. Amen. We want to be in tune with God. All right, so everybody do, do something for me. Let's lift up our spiritual antenna tonight. Ready? Come on. All right. You got it up? All right. We got some young people here tonight. I love preaching to young people. Amen. I was a youth pastor before I was an associate pastor, before I was a lead pastor. I like to call myself a senior pastor because I'm still young. <laughs> Praise God. But uh, anyway, uh, so 21, the year 2021 is going to be your year. And you got to believe it. You got to receive that. Right. See, the word of God just doesn't happen automatically. Right. You got to take it in. You got to absorb it. You got to, the Bible says, meditate on the law of the Lord day and night. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to whet someone's appetite tonight. I'm, I'm trying to get you to say, you know what, man? My pastor was so on fire tonight. Man, I got to keep that mantle in my life. I got to keep that fire burning in my spirit. So we're calling it 21 and 21. In the year 2021, if we start off this year with a 21-day fast, I know some of you, you said, Pastor, I just can't do that. That's a long time. Well, you know, as I get older, maybe some of y'all... You got the older ones, all right? You you, you know what? It, it seems like when you get older, you want to slow things down. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about you, but when you get older, you're like, oh, okay, no, I don't want another birthday right away. Yeah. Come on, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But when you're 21, 20, 14, 15, 16, man, you're like, man, I want to get, I want to be 21 already. Yeah. And then you start getting out to your 30s and 40s, you're like, mm, slow down just a little bit. All right. So believe me, I say that to tell you this. Twenty one is not that long. Twenty one is going to come quick, fast and a hurry. Where did 2020 go? Man, 2020 went by quick, fast and a hurry. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad to put a period on 2020. I'm glad to put a period. Amen. So let's talk a little bit about this 21 day fast. Go with me in your Bibles to Daniel, Daniel chapter 10. When do we get that 21 day fast? Did we just make that up? Did some preacher make it with the Pastor Jensen Franklin just make that up? No, it, it's biblical. Right. It's right. in the word of God. Yeah. It is found in verse three or verse two and three. Daniel chapter 10, verse two and verse three. It says in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning or fasting three full weeks. All right, seven days in a week. So three times seven. You got any mathematicians? 21. See, I know we got some smart people here. Tonight. Seven times three is what? 21. 21. That's when we get 21 days. Let me read it again. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning or fasting for three full weeks. That equals 21 days. And this is what he did in 21 days. Watch what he did in 21 days. Verse 3. I ate no pleasant food. Didn't say he didn't eat any food. He just didn't eat any pleasant food. Right. No meat did he eat or wine came into his mouth. Nor did I anoint myself at all till the three full weeks were fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So this is where we get the 21 day fast. Daniel sought the Lord for 21 days. Yes. He didn't touch any pleasant meat. He didn't touch any uh, wine. He didn't touch any pleasant food. So, in other words, he restricted himself from eating things that he normally probably would have eaten. Right. Or in that region, in that area where he's at. got to understand, he's in Babylon. And they had a lot of, you know, uh, paganistic uh, beliefs and gods. And so he said, I don't want to do that because he was a native Jew and he wanted to adhere to his Jewish roots. He wanted to adhere to the principles of God's word. And so he said, I don't want to do that. Something happened as a result of that. Oh, I want to skip on down to verse 10. Now let's go to Daniel 10 and 10. 
This is powerful. Because I want to encourage you tonight. If you haven't already, we most of us started on Sunday. But you can still start. You can start right now. You can start today. You can start tomorrow. And you can say, God, I want to give you something in my life that I normally do and normally eat, normally drink. And I want to lay it down at the altar of God. And let's just see what God will do. Mm. All right. Look at verse 10. Now remember, he'd been fasting for how many days, church? 21. 21. That's right. He would have been fasting for 21 days. A partial fast. And it says, suddenly, in verse 10, a hand touched me. Glory to God. Mm. And made me tremble on my knees. Woo. And on the palms of my hand. Let me tell you something. If you have never trembled mm -hmm. in the presence of God, Amen. you've never been in the presence of God. Right. Amen. 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 If you've never trembled and let the Lord touch you. I'm looking around at some of you young people. I've seen you touched by God. I've took you to conferences in Louisiana and I've seen the hand of God on, on your life. Yeah. I know what God can do That's right. when we consecrate our lives to the Lord. When we say, God, I'm coming to worship you. Amen. I'm coming to, when I was a young teenager, that's all I wanted was God. I didn't care about a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I didn't care about music. Mm -hmm. I didn't care about getting the latest iPods or getting the latest whatever that was. They didn't have it back then in my day. <laughs> But I didn't care about none of that. I just wanted to be in the house of God. Amen. Amen. All right, I admit it. I was a nut. <laughs> but at least I'm screwed. I was screwed in the right boat. Praise God. Amen. I'll tell you what. I got on fire for the Lord. Mm. And I felt that. I've sensed that many times in my life. Look at that again. He'd been fasting for 21 days. Suddenly a hand touched him. And he's trembling in the presence of that's what happens. When you fast, you get God's attention. Amen. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. If it's a pure motive and it comes from a pure heart, not a religious mode, because you can do it just to say you did it. Right. And that's not going to change you. Right. And it's not going to get you closer to God. Yes, sir. But if you do it with an intention to get closer to God, well, to humble yourself to the Lord, for the Lord to, to, to strip out things of the flesh that you don't need, yes. He'll touch you. Amen. And then it says in verse 11, and he said to me, oh, Daniel, man, greatly beloved. Ooh, I love that. When's the last time God ever told you, I love you? Mm. Mm. When you fast and you seek the Lord, you better watch out. Because you're going to have some divine visitations from heaven. Yeah. You're going to have God say, I love you. Uh, Your relationship. That's what I heard in my heart. Mm. When we were in prayer this past Monday, I felt like the Lord said, I want a relationship with my people. Yes. Amen. Mm. I want to say it again. I felt the Holy Spirit say that to me on Monday night. As I was praying, communing with God. I heard in my spirit. Holy Spirit said, I want a relationship with my people. Mm -hmm. I don't want just my people to come to church. That's good. I don't want just my people to read the Bible. That's good. Mm -hmm. I don't want people to just be a good person. That's good. We need good people. But I heard in my spirit, the Lord said, I want a relationship yes, yes. with you. Do you have a relationship with God? Yeah. Right, right, right. Do, you, do you talk to God as your friend? Yeah. That's right. Like your friends that you have on earth. Mm -hmm. See, that's what God wants, us, wants to do in all of our lives. That's right. He wants to draw us closer to him. Yeah. And fasting can help you do that. Let's right. read on. Right. He said, you're greatly beloved. Understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright for I have now been sent to you while he was speaking this word to me I stood trembling mm. and he said to me this is what the Lord spoke to him through an angel he said do not fear Daniel for from the first day that you set your heart to understand when you fasted day number one you got my attention come on Amen. Amen. yes sir from day when you said I'm going to fast God said I love you That's my child That's my beloved Look at that From the first day That you set your heart to understand And to humble yourself Before your God Your words were heard And I have come Because of your words 
We talked about that in prayer last Monday, this past Monday, yeah. that it is important that we declare the word of God yeah. in our situation, yes. Yes. that we speak it. Mm. We speak not our words, but we speak the word of God. Right. That's why I don't doubt God. I don't doubt God's word. You know why? Because it's his word. Amen. He's the one responsible to bring it to pass. Mm -hmm. I just have to come in agreement with him. Right. 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 Amen. I don't have to make the miracles happen. I don't have to make, you know, the deals to come through. I don't have to, you know, cause the prosperity of God to be in my life. I just got to believe the word of the Lord. Yes. And God wants me to prosper and be in good health, even as my soul prospers. That's all I got to do is I stand and I speak the word of God. It's his word. But watch what happened. During those 21 days. And this is what's going to happen. During our 21 day fact. It always happens. It says but the prince of the kingdom of Persia. Mm. Withstood. Me 21 days. Mm. Even though. We got God's attention. When we humbled ourselves in fasting. And mourning. We also got the attention of the enemy. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. The devil's saying, what are you doing? You're crazy. Going to church on a Wednesday night? Waking yourself up in the morning to be on church on Sunday? Now listen, the same anointing that's here is on Sunday morning. Yes. Amen. Amen. Just got to push yourself. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you have a problem breaking up in the morning, just picture it like a night and get up. <laughs> just pretend it's 7 o'clock at night and get up. Praise God. Amen. Right? And so the devil showed up that he was a prince. The devil he was a demon. He was a principality in the, in the region of Persia. A stronghold. Break every chain. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when you fast. You break chains of darkness. Yeah. You break chains of lust. Yeah. You break chains of pornography. Yeah. Everybody's talking about censorship. Censorship. How come nobody's censoring the porn industry? How come nobody's censoring human drug deals and trafficking? Yeah, that's right. How come nobody's censoring the voices of violence and evil and sin and iniquity that's right. that has been Amen. going on right. mm -hmm. yep. for years? Yeah. Amen. The prince of Persia was stood up how many days? 21 days. And behold, Michael. Mm, Y'all to thank God for Michael. <laughs> Somebody say, thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Miguel. <laughs> Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. In other words, God brought reinforcement to the aid and the assistance of Daniel when he was fasting. Listen, when we fast from the first day, I don't know how many days you're on, but now we're on our, we started Sunday, so Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, the fourth day, we're here. And let me tell you something. Not only has God done some great things and he's moved on by his spirit, but also there's reinforcement. There's supernatural strength. There, you know, I believe like Jesus when he was when he was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, I believe like Jesus, we're gonna have angels minister to us. Yes, yes, amen. And here we see the reinforcement of angels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Michael, who was a chief angel. He was no little angel. Right. Mm -hmm. He was a chief angel. I don't have time to teach you the different ranks of angels. But, but one of the ranks of angels is there are archangels. Mm -hmm. All right. There were, there, there's three of them that are noted in the Bible. Lucifer, Michael, and Gabriel. Right. These are archangels that, were, that have higher rankings than other angels. Lucifer backslid yeah. and he became the devil yeah. but he used to be also an archangel right. so here we find Michael another archangel begins to assist uh, other angels and help in the heavenlies on behalf of Daniel and we, let me just read a couple more verses verse, just verse 14 he said for I've been left alone there that's the way it feels like sometimes when you're fasting you feel all by yourself. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, you got 
Your heart, you're pumping with joy. Your spirit's pumping with energy. Your spirit's pumping with faith. And then you see your, your loved one at your house eating a Twinkie. <laughs> you even know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I mean, you got, you're got you on fire for God. You're at work getting ready to eat your little salad <laughs> with your light, you know, with your light uh, free dressing, branch dressing, light free. You got all of that. And here comes, hey, here comes your car. Hey, I got an extra burger. <laughs> Got an extra flower tortilla. No, I can't eat the flour tortilla. Right, right. <laughs> it always happens. Yes. It always happens. That's yes. just God testing your faith. Yes. That's just God saying, How bad do you want that lemon? Oh uh, chicken hot wings from Wingstop. Let me tell you something. There's some there, there's some things that I want from God more than a lemon chicken hot wing. Right. That's right. There's some things that I want more than a jumbo jack. Yeah. There's some things more that I want than yeah. Kentucky Fried Chicken. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there, there's breakthroughs that I want to happen. Yeah. And if I let go of my flour tortillas for 21 days, I want to see those breakthroughs. Yeah. I want to see those yeah. miracles. Yeah. I want to see those yeah. So I let go of that. Because it's not worth it. Thank you, Lord. Now, I don't know what the Lord's put in your heart. But every year I tell the Lord, God, show me what you want me to fast from. And this year I pick five things. And the Lord showed me. You, you ask the Lord. If you just ask the Lord, He'll, he'll yes. tell you where to give up. Yep, yep, yep. Amen. Yep. And and when you're married, it's good to be in agreement. Amen. Amen. So I asked my wife, "What are you fasting from?" So that I don't want to be a hindrance to her, and she don't want to be a hindrance to me. If she's fasting from tea. I don't want to drink that Lipton tea right in front of her. Praise God. Bible says, "Don't be a stumbling block to one another." Amen. When you love somebody, you you work with somebody. You don't say bye. I see you at church. I'm staying home. See you at church. Yeah. If you're married, you come together. Right. Bless God. That's right. You don't yeah. say bye. Have fun. Good. Yeah. I support you now. You yeah. support me when you leave hands with me. Go to church Amen. with me. Amen. Right. Yeah. Go to the restaurant with yes. me. Fast yeah. tea with me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So he fasted for 21 days, and then verse 14. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people. In the latter days. For the vision refers to many days yet to come. Alright. So. This is what we call. A 21 day. Partial or Daniel fast. Some call it a Daniel fast. Some call it a partial fast. I want to show you real quickly. This is what I'm going to give you tonight. The three kinds of fasting. The Bible mentions. Three kinds of. Generally speaking, there are three kinds of fasting. And I, 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 I'm going to just give them to you in order the way I got them in the back, okay? So number one, if you're taking notes, write this down. The first kind of fast is called an absolute fast. An absolute fast. An absolute fast is exactly what it means. Absolutely no food. Absolutely nothing to drink. Whoa. Nothing. You've taken nothing. Hmm. All right? No food. No drink. Now let me encourage you. If you ever do this kind of fast, do it. Number one, make sure you're led by the Holy Spirit. Because yes. yes. if not, you're going to find out the hard way. This is pretty tough. Yeah. So let make no bones about it. Yes, we can fast from TV and we can fast from social media. Like that, I think that's a good thing to fast from. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Because you don't even know who's telling the truth. That's right. Yeah. And you can fast from different things that are not food. But in the true biblical sense, fasting relates to food. Mm -hmm. And it relates to the absence of drinking. No food. So, again, the absolute fast means no food at all and nothing to drink. Mm -hmm. Pastor, can you give me an example of that? Sure. Let's go to Acts 9.9. Acts 9 9. I wonder if anybody here tonight has had a Damascus experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's when you get saved. Yes. Before Paul the Apostle was the great writer of the two thirds of the New Testament, he was called Saul. And he was a persecutor of Christians. I had somebody tell me one time. Pastor, I don't think the Lord can use me. I've done so many horrible things. Pastor, I, I, I want God to use me, but I don't think God can use me 
I'm just, I'm just messed up. Got too much sin. You know what I told that person? I said, have you ever killed Christians? <laughs> he said, no, I, didn't, I never killed nobody. I said, well, guess what? Before Paul was Paul, he used to kill Christians. Right. Right. He persecuted Christians. Right. Yep. And if God can use Paul, then God can use you. Exactly. God can use you. Yeah. So this is his Damascus experience. I'm not going to take the time to read the whole thing, but he saw a big old bright light around him from heaven. And he tells him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Jesus visited Saul. You ever had Jesus show up in your life? Yep. You ever had an appearance of Jesus? Yep. Paul, before it was Paul, Saul, now the persecutor at this time of Christians, had an appearance of Jesus. And uh, he started trembling again, like we said with Daniel. Verse, let's pick it up in verse um, 6. Acts chapter 9, verse 6. Anybody got that in the Bible? Acts chapter 9, verse 6. Anybody got that in their phone? Hmm. Anybody got that in their app? Yes. Anybody got it anyway? Yes. All right, Sister Celia, read that for me. Okay. Acts 9, verse 6. All the way down to verse 9. I can hear you. Okay. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. In verse 9. And he was there, and he was, and he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Thank you, Sister Sarah. Notice Acts nine nine. He didn't eat anything. He didn't drink anything. That was an absolute fast. But notice the time. Here's the second thing you got to remember about an absolute fast. Not only must you be led by God to do it. Number two. Don't do it for too long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't do it for 40 days. Oh. Mm. Amen. We're gonna have to, you're going to have to call me from the hospital to pray for you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. He only did it for three days. Mm. But it was an absolute fast. Mm. And it was, it was preparing him to be the next leader in the early church. Mm -hmm. So he had to fa fasting prepared him yes. for the ministry. Listen, if God has called you to the ministry... You can't do it until you prepare yourself in the area of fasting. Yes, yes. Come on. God will cause you. You, you, you hear clearer, clearer the voice of God when you're not focused on food mm, yeah. and drinks. Yeah. Right, right. You're more attentive to the voice of God. Yes, yes. The, the, the wax of the world comes out of your ears yeah. when you fast. All right. So that's an example of the first kind of fast. Number two, there is what is called a normal fast. A normal fast. What is a normal fast? Almost like the absolute fast, there's no food, but you can't drink water. In other words, you don't fast from water. You don't fast from drink. And oftentimes, this I'm trying to help you out, that when you go through a normal fast, sometimes you got to drink beyond water. Sometimes you need some, maybe chicken broth, or maybe you need some other liquids to help you. Maybe cranberry juices, or some other juices to kind of regain your strength. So it's not just water. It, 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 you want to start out with water. And by the way, write this down if you're taking notes. Water is the faster's best friend. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Water is going to keep you going. Right. Yep. That's what you need to sustain yourself more than anything with water. Mm -hmm. When you feel weak, when you feel drowsy in a fast, drink some water. Yes, yes, and let me encourage you to drink purified water. Woo. It's better than that water from your sink mm. and from your bathtub and all that. Mm. <laughs> Praise God. Don't yeah. drink that same water that you brush your teeth with. <laughs> Get that purified water because it cleanses the toxins. 
and the impurities that are in your body. One thing that I've noticed, this is a, this is a health note. One thing that I've noticed when I always start my fast, I start to see a cleansing and a purification of my toxins. Yeah. Because the water is clearing out. Yeah. The Dr. Pepper, the Pepsi, Ooh. the barbacoa. Come on, somebody. Oh. The, the water is draining that out. Amen? Amen? So, you know, and I know there's some of you that got even a higher level of water. All right. But yeah, let's give you an example. Luke 4. Better, no better example but Jesus himself. Now, I love the fact that Jesus fasted. When he began his ministry, Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Yes. He didn't preach to anybody yet. He didn't minister to anybody yet. He said, I got to consecrate my life, my body, my spirit, my soul. I got to consecrate everything and fasting before I do anything for the Lord. Mm. He started his ministry at 30 years of age. And he died on the cross at 33 and a half years. So he only had a ministry on earth for three and a half years. But yet it was dynamic. Mm -hmm. It was effective. Why? Because he consecrated his life in fasting. So let's go to Luke 4, verse 1. Luke 4 and verse 1. Now, Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. And by the way, if you're going to pass, brother, you're going to need that infilling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're going to need the anointing power of God upon your life. You cannot do it in your own power. Amen. You can't do it just, you know, in your own strength. Right. You need to be filled with the Spirit. Yes. Amen. And it says that he returned from the Jordan after he was baptized. You remember? He was baptized in the water by John the Baptist. And so that's what he's talking about. And he was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. Mm. Right. Don't think that it's a bad thing you're doing this fast. Mm -hmm. Nah, some of you, you're going to probably want to quit the beginning. You're going to quit, you're going to say, ah, it just wasn't for me. You know, I'm just, that, that's just not my cup of tea. <laughs> that's for Pastor and Joanna. And, you know, that's for the leaders of the church, that's for the ushers. Yeah, but that's not for me. Now remember, it's the spirit that leads you to fast. Yeah. It's the spirit that wants you to grow. Yeah. So don't quit. Don't give up just because it gets hard. Yeah. Now look at verse 2. Here's where we find the normal fast. So be tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing. And afterwards, when they had ended, when they had ended, he was hungry. Notice, it didn't say that he didn't drink. All it says was he didn't eat anything. Which means he drank water. That is what is called a normal fast. Alright, so so far, we're learning. Are, are we learning? The absolute fast is what? You take in nothing. No food and no water or no liquids whatsoever. Only do that by letter of the Holy Spirit and don't do it for a long period of time. Right. Number two, the normal fast, like Jesus, it can go for longer than three days, maybe. But it is an opportunity for you to get restored and restrained with liquids. You don't fast from water. You don't fast from juices. You don't fast from purified water. You keep that in your system. You keep that growing and you know, get that intake. But you don't need no food. Now, here's the one that I think we all can relate to and we all can participate. You said, man, that's a little too much for me, Pastor. I mean, you know, it, it's kind of hard. I got, I got to have my wiggle on toast. You know, I got to have my, my uh, potato and egg in the morning. All right. So, all right. So this is what I'm going to challenge you to do. If you think it's impossible, those other two that I just mentioned, we can all participate. And here's what we said earlier, the partial fast. The partial fast. This is when we give up a certain kind of food for a period of time. In other words, it's a restriction on certain foods and certain drinks. All right? And it's it's up to you. Like I said, if you're married, it's just wise to consult your wife, your husband, and to be in agreement with that. And in your family, you know, I want to challenge you. I want to, I got scripture to prove what I'm about to say. No one is exempt 
biblically speaking, from fasting. Not even our little children. Mm-hmm. Not even our grandkids. You say, I'm not going to push that on them. Well, I'm going to show you in the Bible where all of the families, even the nursing babes, were fasting. And God poured out his blessing upon that nation. Wow. Mm. So, we can all fast. That's what I'm saying. We can all fast. Let me give you another example. We read that other one in Daniel 10. You remember that one? Yeah. That we opened up with? Now let's go back to Daniel. But let's go to Daniel 1 now. Daniel chapter 1. This might be my last scripture tonight. And then I'm going to pray that God will give you the strength that you need Amen. to run this race with fasting yes. for 21 days. But don't look at 21 days. Just look at one day. Y'all remember that old song? One day day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking from you. Can you play it? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Un día a la vez, mi Cristo. I I forgot the words. Someone's going to tell me on on Facebook. They're going to give me the words. On my Spanish friend, la casa, la casa. But look at Daniel 1 real quick. Daniel 1.11. Remember I told you that Daniel, not only him, but he had three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But that was not their, that was not their Jewish names. They changed their names when they went to Babylon. They were in Babylon captivity. And so they altered and changed their names to accustom to the gods of Babylon. But they all had faith in God and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So look at verse 11. They came before the king and they were all told um, to eat of the, of the king's delicacies. So Daniel, verse 11, said to the steward from the chief of the eunuchs, and he that had said over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. In other words, we know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Verse 12. Please test yourself. This is what is Daniel saying. To, to them, to, you know, talking about them for him and then shout out Meshach and Abednego. He said, test us 10 days and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance be examined before you and the appearance of the young men who eat those other guys that eat the portion of the king's delicacies. As you see fit, so deal with your servant. Now he's saying right there, we have convictions. Right. Our convictions is we don't want to eat the king's delicacies because mm. we feel like we're betraying God. Right. We feel like we're uh, denying our faith. So please give us 10 days. We'll prove to you that we'll be even sharper in our appearance and our health and our well-being than the ones that do take the meat and everything with no restriction. In other words, let's say let's have a challenge. All those that are not fasting, test us with us that are fasting. Amen. All right? So when people look at me and they say, man, I feel sorry for you. Uh-huh. Yeah, they say that. You can't eat a double cheeseburger for 21 days. I feel sorry for you. I've had people look at me like that, mock me. Mm-hmm. Eating their double cheese. <laughs> you think that you go ahead? That's what Daniel said. Mm. Let's make a challenge. I, we're gonna come, we're gonna have a fasting challenge. All of you who don't want to fast and think I'm crazy, <laughs> keep doing what you do. But I'm gonna fast, and let's come back and look at it, and we're gonna look in the mirror, and we're gonna see who looks better Woo. after ten days. All right. And we're gonna test after ten days. After you eat all your T-bone steak and all of your, you know, all of the things that are not vegetables, you eat every flour tortilla in Mario's Bakery, then come back in 10 days and let's look at the mirror. And let's see, let's see who's got a better panza. Let's see how we're going to look after 10. That's what Daniel's saying. Give us a chance. Give us a 10-day test. He said, all right. The steward said, all right. So we pick it up in verse 14. So he consented with them. My translation. All right. In this matter, 
And he tested them for 10 days. Here's what happened. It's the good news for all the fast. Because like I said, I've had people say, man, I feel sorry for you. I look at them and I say, I feel sorry for you. Yeah. I feel sorry for you because you ain't getting no breakthroughs. Uh -huh. You ain't getting no heaven experiences. Mm -hmm. You ain't getting no divine intense visitations from God. Mm -hmm. You want to live your life the way you've always lived? Go ahead. Stay in the flesh. I'm getting in the spirit. Praise right. God. Right. Uh -huh. yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's better than the spirit. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And at the end of 10 days, their features appeared better and fatter. Now that word doesn't mean they were, you had a double chin. <laughs> it means they were leaner. That's a really a poor translation. It means to be lean in the flesh. Mm. And all the young men <clears throat> who ate the portion of the king's delicacy. Thus, look at what happened. Look what the steward did. Oh, this is getting good. Then the steward took away their portion of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink and gave them vegetables. Yes, yes, yes. They started out with vegetables. He said, they're not gonna, they're not gonna last. Yeah, that's what the devil says to us. Yeah, all you people who say you want God, all you people who say you want Jesus, yeah, we'll see Sunday who shows up. Amen. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. That's what the devil said, you're not gonna get up on Sunday to go to church. Why are you fooling yourself? Why don't you give the devil a black eye? And say, devil, I'm serious about my walk That's with God. Right. I'm serious about my relationship with God. Yeah. I want to grow with the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. He said, here's the vegetables. Wow, these guys look better. Woo, they're checking them out. Y'all guys look good. That's right. Let's give them some vegetables. And as for these four young men, God gave them, watch this, knowledge and skill and all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Mm -hmm. Good. You know what's going to happen when you fast? You're going to be in tune with the vision and the dream that God has birthed in your life. Yes. Yes. For some of you, it looks blurry. For some of you, your vision, your dream, if I was to ask you, what's your vision? What do you believe God's dream is for your life? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Finish high school? <laughs> Get a nursing degree? I don't know. Work in the medical field? I don't have a clue. Some of you don't even have a clue. Who, 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 who are you going to marry? I don't know. Anybody, I guess. <laughs> Anybody that asked me out to go to the next bitch? I don't know. You want your vision to be clear? I believe when you fast, God will even show you who you're going to marry. God will show you that vision of that wife. God will show you that vision of that man of God. Come on, somebody. But it's in, it's in the spirit that we tap into that. Listen, the flesh profits nothing. There are people, maybe your mom or your dad, somebody you know, they married whoever they wanted to marry. Guess what? They're not married right now. It didn't work for them. It's sure going to work for you. That's right. Because nothing works in the flesh. That's right. Amen. It works only by the word of God. That's right. Yeah. And by the spirit of God. Yes. Yes. Amen. Am I helping somebody today? Amen. And let me finish it. I'm going to finish that with verse. The end of the chapter. 118. Now at the end of the days. When the king had said. That they should be brought to the chief of the eunuchs. He brought them to be before the king, Nebuchadnezzar. See, when you fast, you come before the king of kings. You come before the Lord. Promotion doesn't come from the east or the west, but it comes from the Lord. Amen. Then the king interviewed them. And among them, none was found like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore, they served before the king. Let me tell you, when you've really been with God, when you've really been in tune with the Holy Spirit mm. and you're fasting, you don't have a big head. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's right. You know how I know you've been with God? You don't talk about yourself. Mm. Right. That's good. I taught you one time what arrogant people do, right? Mm. They love talking about themselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then when they finish talking about themselves, they say, that's enough talking about me, talking about me. Now you talk about me. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody know somebody like that? Now don't be looking next to your right, to your left. 
I mean, they love you talking about them. Yeah, isn't that so good? They talk about themselves. Now you talk about me. <laughs> never satisfied. People that are arrogant are never satisfied. Right. But I love the spirit of a true faster. This is a spirit of a faster. This is a spirit of a, of a prayer warrior. This is a spirit of, 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 of a man or a woman of God that's been with the Lord. It says they serve before the king. Yeah. They serve. You would think, okay, man, I'm fasting. I deserve to be on top. I, no, no, no. I want to be a servant. Yes. Amen. Man, that's the heart of God. Mm -hmm. And verse 20, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them. Here it is. Ooh, underline it. Make note of it in your Bible. They were 10 times better yes. than all the magicians and the astrologers who were in, a, in that realm. So what happened in 10 days? In 10 days, every day, they got better than the enemy. Jesus! The fight is on! One of the points I'm going to bring you, I'm already done. You close your Bible, close your phone, shut your phone off. Praise God. I'm done. I'm not through, but I'm done. Let me tell you something. The devil is mad, and I'm glad because another soul he thought he had. Yeah, right. The devil's mad because he thinks we're going to give up, but no. That's right. I love this of God. Mm. Mm -hmm. You start fasting every day, you start seeing the goodness of God. Yes. Every day, you see the blessings of God. Every day, you see the benefits of God. That's right. Every day, thank you, sir. Every day, you're getting 10 times better yes. than your enemies. Yes. 10 times better. Yes. Amen. But you know what? There's going to be a moment. There's going to be a time when you're, you're going to feel like quitting. I'm just trying to warn you. You're going to feel like giving up. I've been there. Man, this is hard, Lord. Okay, the first day was good. I survived. Whew. Second day is all right. A little, a little bit better. But, ooh, that stomach's going to turn one day. <laughs> You're going to hear it growling all day long, and you just ate yes. a wheat sandwich. You just had a wheat sandwich. <laughs> and your stomach's going to be turning after that wheat sandwich. <laughs> and eating those sugar-free snacks. Yeah. And drinking water. Or maybe fruit juice. Or cranberry juice. You're going to be like, why am I still full? Why am I still hungry? I can't get full from this fast. You're not supposed to. You just got to keep fighting. Yes. Amen. You just got to keep fighting. Yes, yes. This is what happens. I heard a preacher say this, man, I, had, I have to say this. Because I love this brother. And I heard him say this. When uh, I'm not going to get the credit for it. I'm going to give it to Brother Mario Murillo. Right? I heard him say this. He's like, you remember when you were younger and, and you were fighting or you heard about a fight, a fight was about ready to start. I know some of you are too sanctified. You, 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 I know you got halos over your head, I, I know that. But, but you remember BC before Christ? And you used to fight with everybody. They just looked at you and said, oh no you didn't, girl. Somebody just accidentally hit you on the shoulder. What'd you do that for? Huh, you want some of me? Yeah, I know it's we got fighters in here. I know. I've heard your stories. I heard her, Brother Minor Real said, man, I love this. He said, a fight doesn't start when someone says, yo mama. <laughs> he said, that's not when a start fights. Y'all remember when you were in school? Or, okay, maybe just last week it happened for some reason. He said, a fight don't start when you say, yo mama. Boy, well, that's tough. I, you know, when you talk about my mama, boy, you got my attention. Don't you be talking about my mama? All right? But a fight, he said, doesn't start when you say, yo, mama. He said, you know what the fight starts with? When somebody says, ooh. <laughs> 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 that's when the fight starts. Not when you say, yo, mama. It's when someone says, oh. Man, I wish my sister Sonia was here. Oh. Oh. No, he didn't say your 
Jesus said, that's what's going to happen. When the enemy says, give up your mama. When the enemy says, it's over. The Holy Spirit is going to say, Woo! You don't talk about my Lord. Amen. You don't talk about my Savior. Did y'all receive something from the Lord tonight? Yeah. I want to pray for you. I felt that of the Lord all night long. I said, Lord, what do you want me to do at this altar call tonight? The Lord said, pray for everyone that's hungry to fast. If you're hungry to fast, maybe you haven't even started already. Why don't you start tonight? Why don't you start tomorrow? And say, Lord, I'm going to honor you with something. I'm going to give you something that means something to me as a sacrifice to God. Thank you, Lord. Listen, I know some of you, you need a breakthrough in your family. I said you need a breakthrough in your family. You need a breakthrough, some of you, in your finances. Some of you need a breakthrough in your children that God will touch their heart, put a desire back in their heart to come to church. You've heard the devil say, yo, mama, come on. You've heard the devil say, you're going down. But you need to hear the, the sound of heaven. Ooh, no, 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 no. You're coming out of this thing. And I'm going to open up this altar. I know this altar is not for everybody. But I'm going to invite those tonight that are hungry to fast. Yes. Hungry to get closer to God. Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are those that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So tonight, as your pastor, I want to lay hands on you, those of you that are hungry to fast, and you want to see God break some chains. You want God to destroy some yokes of bondages. You want God to remove some heavy burdens. Oh, hallelujah. It's up to you. But if you hear that spirit of God tugging at your heart, come on out. Come on to the front. And I'm going to ask the praise team to worship the Lord if you want. Hallelujah. This is how I fight my battles.
there's a new hunger in your heart for God. There's a new hunger in your heart. God's not only restoring your joy, He's restoring that relationship. Oh, I see you a fighter. You're a fighter, brother. You're a fighter. And you're going to win in Jesus' name.
Lord say to you, Tashua? I'm going to use you as a minister of the gospel. You will preach my word. You have the mantle of your spiritual father and your biological father. You will carry that anointing of pastoring. You will begin to work with young people. And I will give you favor. And the word's just going to come out of you as you minister to young people. The Lord would say to you, consecrate yourself. Consecrate yourself. And get ready. Because I'm going to use you this year in 2021. It's going to be a supernatural year. Come on, church. Come on, church. Jesus' name.